Live. I'm Coach Rick, and tonight I'm joined by first, we've got Coach Jen. Jen, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Awesome. And we have guests, Lynette and Kate. Uh, you guys are from the HMR program in Grand Forks, North Dakota, <laughs> Altru's Weight Management. So hello, everyone. Kate, Lynette, how is it, how's it going tonight here on this Thursday? Awesome. Fabulous. Great. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, just as you look at the title here, for those of you who are, who are just starting to watch this video, uh, you can guess that we're going to be talking about the HMR box. That really is the driver of weight loss in phase one. But if you are in phase two, please do not tune out. We're going to be talking about weight loss for sure. But if you think about it, after weight loss, when you're in phase two, ongoing weight management really does require ongoing calorie management. And the reality is everybody, no exceptions, has high calorie days at, at some point or another. So in order to not gain weight, you need to pull off a low calorie day, otherwise known as a weight loss day. And there are just so many things that work so well in phase one to help people do that, that really can be adapted for phase two. So regardless of whatever phase you're in, this should be a very relevant conversation for you. And maybe the question that might be good to ask is whether you're in phase one or phase two, what are you taking from today's conversation about pulling off low calorie days, weight loss days that you might wanna bring into uh, this next week? Again, whether you're in phase one or phase two. So again, we're gonna be hearing from you, Kate and Lynette about your work in these areas. Both of you guys are in phase one, which is interesting. Last week we had uh, Tim on, it was his five year anniversary with HMR. So he's, he was sort of a long timer. Next week, we have Rita coming on. I shared that with you guys. She's been with HMR since 1990. So you guys are really like right at the upfront part of this. So that makes this interview somewhat unique compared to the last, uh, last week and next week. So let's, um, before we get into hearing about your experiences in the program, Jen, yeah. could you just take a minute? Why don't you talk a little bit about your clinic just for a moment? Sure, absolutely. So the clinic started about three years ago when we, we actually discovered HMR through my dietetic practice group. Um, that's kind of how I found out. I was kind of looking around, doing some research, and by far HMR came up from our weight management dietitians as like a top program that was recommended. So I'm like, you know what? I need to find out about this. Um, this sounds like something that I should talk about bringing to all true. Mm -hmm. So we were... We're in very good hands. So three years has gone by really fast. Um, we're excited because we've partnered with the program that's been named, you know, the number one best fast weight loss program for six years in a row. I mean, who can't go wrong with that? <laughs> we've helped since that time, we've helped over 83 patients lose 2,300 pounds and counting. Wow. Um, so it's, it's been amazing just to <laughs> see the journey um, Coach Rachel and I, again, we have 40 years of experience be between us two, and we sincerely love working with our patients. So it's exciting. Anybody that we can help, we are definitely um, there for them and, and wanting to, to provide a great experience. That's great. Well, you just mentioned your, your colleague, uh, and you all shared with us just a moment ago, uh, an informal nickname that you guys have in the clinic. What is it yes. that you and Coach Rachel have? <laughs> so we... <laughs> We like to joke that we're lightning and thunder so you can't have one without the other um, why we kind of came up with that is because I my background is a registered dietitian and a board certified sports dietitian and Rachel is actually an exercise physiologist and health coach um, awesome. by trade so both of us I feel like our our uh, professions complement each other really nice and we've been we've been in it to win it since the start um, of this program. We attended weight management training together in, in California, learned about the program and kind of kicked it off honestly here. So it's kind of our baby. <laughs> really Lightning great. What, and a, thunder. what a power <laughs> team. That's so yeah. awesome. I'm going to just take a minute before we launch into um, hearing from you, Lynette and Kate. I just want to welcome a few people who've joined us. We've got several colleagues. We've got Nancy and Kate here. Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Um, where's my mug? Oh yeah. I want to just so Jennifer, can you see it there? My HMR mug, thou shalt not covet. I know you like that mug, you've mentioned it before. Um, Susan, welcome, awesome. Thank you for being here. And Bob is also here. Uh, Bob here is here every week. Bob, you're from, uh, you're from North Dakota too, aren't you, Bob? 
if I have that right. Uh, it's just an in inside joke, guys. Uh, we know where Bob is from. Everyone knows. Rancho Cucamonga, California. Excellent. Uh, Sandra, welcome. And Dana, how excellent that uh, everyone is here. Really, really good. So Lynette and Kate, we had a chance to speak to both of you last week. Um, sometimes we get a chance to have that discussion as a group, but last week we actually spoke to you separately, but it was really interesting how many similarities there were um, when you guys were sharing about your experience with your weight before HMR and then in HMR, a number of different parallels. So let's just start real briefly here and, and talk about your history of dieting before HMR. You both had shared you'd been longtime dieters. Kate, start us off here. What age do you remember really wanting to lose weight and trying to lose weight? Take us through your history just a little bit. Um, I think the first like actual structured type diet that my family put me on, I was probably 12. <laughs> so it's been a while. It's going to be 32 this month. So 20 years <laughs> of trying to diet. I think that's a common experience, Kate. I think a lot of people can uh, mm -hmm. share that. Lynette, what about you? I mean, some people come to HMR having experienced recent weight gain, others uh, more common probably. They've you know kind of been working at it their whole life. What about you? I think I have been working, well, I know I've been working at it my whole life. Mm -hmm. I, my weight has gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down. Um, and I, th this is the year that I have set aside to get healthy. So um, I'm going to do, I, I'm doing it with HMR. And so I think the first weight management program was Weight Watchers when I started when I was 25 mm -hmm. and that a couple of times, some other programs. And so this is it. It's, it's, it's the program for me. And I know what it, it will work. It is working. Yeah. This, I know, I know we'll have more about this, but the HMR program is really is in stark contrast. You had shared with us one particular diet that was very restrictive that you had tried in the past where you weren't able to eat a lot of fruits and veggies. Talk about that a little bit, what that experience yeah. was. Yeah. So I started, um, I started that program, the Sanford profile diet and, um, lost weight very quickly, but it wasn't for me, it's not a sustainable diet. And I, the one thing that I really did not like about it is no fruits and vegetables. And mm. I, I, and that's the one thing that I love about the HMR weight management program. It, you can, for me, I get in at least eight or nine fruits and vegetables every day. Amazing. And the variety is fantastic. Um, it, it's, it's, so that's really what's working for me in, in the other program in the food wasn't all that great that the, sh I mean, that you were on shakes and slowly you added in some of their other food. So HMR, it's, it really is, I mean, there's so much variety. Um, and to me, just having those fruits and vegetables is absolutely key. Yeah. I always feel compelled to comment the latest data from the CDC on fruit and veggie intake. You know, here you are seven or eight, you say, uh, in a day. The average is um, fewer than 10 servings in a week. I see that crazy. often. I mean, right? My <laughs> HMR patients are, are uh, really hitting the mark on just amazing fruit and vegetable intake. I know, Kate, you share too with me, like all your creativity with the fruits and vegetables and how you're making different combinations always, right? Mm -hmm. I, I try. Oh, uh, my new thing is just adding cauliflower rice to everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It, like, it works. <laughs> if you look at the calories on it, you should feel really good about that. The, the calories yeah, on like cauliflower rice at rock bottom. Frozen out. I just scoop it out of the big frozen bag and microwave it and I'm fine. I'm yeah, good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I want to, I want to hear more about that. I, I, you did mention also, Kate, when you and I spoke that you had you know, through a, a history of doing different programs. You had had some success with calorie counting for a period of time, but then you decided that that approach really wasn't a good long-term solution for you. Say a bit more about why, like what brought you to that conclusion about the calorie counting approach. It, it got to the point where it was like, it got tedious for me where mm. I was like, okay, now I have to, I'm putting barbecue sauce on this. That's like five calories. 
and I'm going to put butter on it. That's like another at least 20 calories. And that's just a little bit. And then like, I still know that a slice of wheat bread is 90 calories. I know that that's in my head forever now. <laughs> I could probably pretty much estimate it, but I was like, well, now that I'm estimating it, I'm going to lose track. And it, it became a whole thing. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, it, for the long haul, I mean, it, I think there are individual differences. Some people find the calorie counting helps. It, it is a, a hard thing to keep up over time, oh. really hard. And it's particularly hard on those days when you're counting calories and you're like, whoops, I'm over my budget for the day and it's only <laughs> seven o'clock at night. <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh, that's, uh, that can be a little bit discouraging. Yeah, so this sim the simplicity of this approach is something I think you both spoke to. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, Jen, is there anything you want to ask about their history before uh, coming into the program before we move on? Well, I think Lynette and Kate, you both brought up a really good point. You've tried other things and, and they didn't work for one reason or another. Maybe it was restrictive. Maybe it was like Kate mentioned, it was tedious. And so the simplicity really is kind of what, is, what you're alluding to, is that correct? The simplicity of the plan and how it fits into your lifestyle. And then again, with the, the less restrictive, talking to more is better, which again, Rick, Rick mentioned, yeah. we're gonna get to talking a lot about more is better and why that's important. So the simplicity, talk a little bit about that and, and how you feel like on, on this plan versus others. Does that appeal, did that appeal to you initially? And how do you feel going forward? Um, for me, that's like one of my number one reasons is that I, you know, I work a lot. Yes. <laughs> um, I think Tuesday I worked from like 5.30 to nine at night. <laughs> so <No>. absolutely. <laughs> that's that's crazy. rough. Um, so I don't, I don't have time to do it a lot. So yeah. it's either like, I needed to find something more convenient than using a DoorDash or something. But that's what I needed. It was something more convenient than fast food. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's like the time commitment. It's easy. Yeah. It's simple. You have your foods there to right. support you and you don't have to think about it. Right. You don't no. have to think about the choices, which is awesome. <laughs> and that's what I think works for me as well, is that you can grab and go. You've got yeah. your entrees to grab, but yet there's, there's so much to choose from. And if you don't I, people talk about, well, I don't like the taste of this one. So then you, you figure out, add in some spices or, I mean, I'm an extract believer now. Yeah. That was one of the first things that I did when I started the program is we talked about, okay, how do you make something work for you? And so I, I bought orange extracts. I bought peppermint extract. I mean, all these different things and just experiment with it. But um, I think the simplicity of the program is absolute key. And that is what um, my sister, Jamie, works at All True. So sh she said, she introduced me to the program idea. And she said, just go talk to Coach Rachel. She'll tell you all about it. Okay. <laughs> so I did. And I loved that it, I like that it is so structured because yeah. you do, you can prep your fruits and vegetables for the week. And then you just grab, you can, you um, We'll talk about some of the unique recipes too that we can make. Because love it, you gotta make it your own. Yes, you do. And you, yeah, Lynette, you had mentioned um, you actually both had somebody recommend HMR to you because it's a very serious, structured program. So who brought this up? So you mentioned your sister brought it up because she worked yep. at at All True and and kind of go back to like what was happening in your life at that time. So Lynette, yeah. do you want to expand on that? And then Kate, I'd like to hear from you too. Like who recommended it? What was going on? What made you like say, this is it? This is the yeah. program for me. I think me, my sister maybe got sick of me talking about my achy joints. Um, oh, summer's coming up. I can't even fit into any of my shorts. Um, I was pre-diabetic at that time. Um, at a weight where, and there's so much diabetes in our family. So I just started to worry. And I think she got sick and tired of me saying, all right. And in just trying things on my own, what wasn't working. Yep. So, she, so she knew I needed the structure. So um, she just said, and plus my daughter is getting married this summer. So I really wanted to be healthy, feel good, look good, and just get in a better place. 
um, mental health wise. So she recommended the program and oh, couldn't be and happy. here you are. I want to just pause yeah. and reflect a couple of the comments, guys, just so you can hear people who are watching. Um, again, there's a range of people, people who might be looking into HMR who are watching or people who are in phase one or people who are in phase two. So Heather, thank you for this post. She wrote, I was one of the first here in, in Lexington 22 years ago, lost nearly 100 pounds. I am now on day one and doing this again. So um, be thinking about any words of encouragement, guys, because both yeah. of you are in the process of losing weight. Um, you want to just sort of put a stake in the ground. Um, Lynette, um, what's your weight loss to date? And then Kate, if you could just uh, tell yours, uh, both of you guys still in phase one, still wanting to lose more weight. Uh, go ahead, Lynette. 30, um, today I weighed in 31 pounds down. And after this, this is my first week on phase two. So I'm just slowly, um, but I'm, yeah. That's so. almost three pounds more than when I spoke to you last. <laughs> I know. Wait, I know. I'm going into phase two. I have to change no, it. My date is wrong on the on your slide that I'm going to show. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. 31 <laughs> pounds. I started at 191 pounds. I'm, yes, okay. I'm so excited. Beautiful. And Kate, how much are you down right goal. now so far in phase one? Um, like 27 point something. Great. Well as done. As of like an hour ago. <laughs> well done. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, Kate, a couple of like-minded people um, are posting here. Uh, Susan, same experience with calorie counting. Thumbs down. Bob Garrison, I hate calorie counting. <laughs> Tell me what to, need, what to do that and I'm out of here. So <laughs> I think that, that a lot of people have had it. Bob, I understand. Yeah. Relatable, right? Very. Completely. By the way, Bob also shared that um, he has come back into phase one, I think yesterday, if I remember correctly, was that your post, Bob? You're on day, uh, Bob has lost uh, so much weight in the program, but COVID does what COVID does. Yep. And uh, so Bob has come back in and he's on day two or three now, maybe confirm awesome. that in the comments. To a way to get back on to chip away at it before it becomes some big insurmountable thing, Bob. That's wonderful. Good really job, Bob. Great. Uh, Dara, hi. Dara's joined us. Um, not being deprived and hungry all the time. Yes, huge, huge yes. benefit here to the simplicity. And um, I'll just reflect, Jennifer, I was told another surgery wasn't an option, so I needed to find mm. something. This seemed to be a no-brainer. That's beautiful, Jennifer. And That's I oftentimes what we hear. Like we, we get a lot of referrals from our surgeons just looking to help patients have better outcomes before they have surgery. So really, because of the nutrients in it, because you're not hungry, I think it's a great option to get you prepared, right? For yeah. any major surgery, honestly. Absolutely. Uh, Becky Lynn, uh, one month today, down 17. Congratulations. Woo. That's just great. Give her some love in the Yay. community. Yay. Really great, great, strong start <laughs> for you, Becky Lynn. That's super. Hey, we heard just heard from Lynette from you about um, someone recommending HMR and, you know, what was happening in your life where it's really time to, to do a serious program. I'd, I'd love to hear, Kate, you had shared that with us as well. Tell us um, who talked to you about that and what was going on in your life that had to say, okay, I'm, I'm open to taking on this serious program. Um, well, I have a genetic heart condition. So I've, I've had it, you know, I've had three open heart surgeries mm -hmm. and I went to see my cardiologist and he was like, hey, uh, you're not losing weight. <laughs> I remember last time you said, and I'm like, I know, I know what I said. And uh, he was like, just go to this appointment. And he's like making the appointment. He's like, you're going to it. And I'm like, okay, fine. And he's like, at least just go talk to them. Mm -hmm. And I got there and I think Rachel did the first appointment with me. And she just like explained everything. And I was like, I'm in. And she's like, when do you want to start? And I'm like, when can I start? I'm in. And she's like, That's so awesome. and I was like, yes, this Thursday, right now we're doing this. <laughs> well done. Well done. And you've got a, such a great start so far. Uh, beautiful. I hope that just this experience of being on the Facebook Live just reinforces everything that you're doing in the program. Well, so, it was so much easier than I thought too, because like there are weeks where I go in, I'm like, I've gained. There's no way. I ate so much like volume of food this week. I ate <laughs> no. so much food that there's no possible way. I drank way too many shakes. I had so much, I added so many like apples and vegetables and stuff. There's no possible way 
and then Jen will be like, yeah, you lost like three pounds. I'm like, huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's mind blowing, it's, 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 isn't it? It's so hard to get out of that like dieting mentality where you have to be deprived. And I love yep. that. Lynette already alluded to that. And Kate, you're you're mentioning that. It's like your yeah. mind is telling you I should be gaining weight with this volume, but you're not. Yeah. Which yeah. is amazing. I even tried to cut back one week um to to less shakes and I was hungry and I thought I just yeah. I can't do it when if you're hungry on a program uh, so i increased the shakes again and i continued to lose beautiful so you know, i i went out to um, one of our local clinics a few years ago and i was talking to a very interviewing really a very successful phase two group so these were people you know i'm going i'm up but they, you know these guys are bought and sold they, they are so into hmr they're so successful and everything and what they told me it was amazing they said yeah, I practiced more is better um, for the weight loss, but I almost never believed it. I almost just had, it was like a leap of faith. I just yeah. had to trust True. more is better. Jennifer's writing more is better. What a concept. Yeah, I you know. have to yeah. get over what sort of like questioning <laughs> did you, did you just do it to be a good doobie or did you, did it make sense to you? Or like, what was that experience? Uh, Lynette, you first, like more is it better. It doesn't make sense because yeah. when you're, when you're on a, on a, a, all the other previous diets, it's, yeah, it's like you're, you're almost forced to deprive yourself because you have to, whether you're counting calories or carbs, proteins, whatever. Um, it is that, that mindset that I feel like I have to be hungry, but on this program, mm -mm. I mean, coach Rachel punches that into you. It's like more is better. If you're hungry, you eat, but stay in the box. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's easy. That's awesome. Eat less, which you hear from everybody. You even read it sometimes in, in research journals in these like upfront part, you know, yeah. we all know the adage, you got to exercise more and eat less. Well, that makes sense. If you're, if you're like just talking without respect to calories, mm -hmm. but once you start to look at the calories, I mean, you just said it, Kate down three pounds down three pounds because even though you ate a, a lot of volume you did not eat a lot of calories <laughs> look at the foods that you just listed there so kate build a little bit more on you you already mentioned it earlier you, you're you're busy you get up early you're going all day long you we've talked for a moment ago about the simplicity of the program but now add, add on to this idea that you can eat when you need to take us a little bit through your day and you know how do you stay on track in a busy day well, I, you, you have to prepare if you're going to be busy on the weekends. I just kind of like, um, I stay home. I don't have to prepare for anything. It's all here. Mm -hmm. But when I have to go to work, I know that I'm going to do a coffee in the morning and I do a um, scoop in my coffee. I make like a mocha. And then I know I'm probably going to do like a double mm -hmm. shake or something at lunch. I'll probably have another shake at some point <laughs> if I'm there long enough. And yes. then I'll try to bring like an apple or like snack or carrot, some, something like that. Um, but during the day, I'm not going to have, I usually don't have an entree. I just don't because I don't have time even to do that <laughs> sometimes. Um, but I plan out, I'm like, okay, tonight when I get home, I know that I want to have chili and like a sweet potato. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, and I, I love Jen and I talk about this like every week. It's yeah. like, these are the new fun things that I found out I can eat this week. And so like, I love food yes. and she loves food. And we're like, we get so excited. And I sometimes look <laughs> like people are like, Kate, stop talking about sugar-free syrup so that we can <laughs> go home. <laughs> and I'm like, but great I'm class. not a person. We have a great <laughs> class. <laughs> yeah. Lots of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what's important too is variety. So then we're never bored, right? We're not like eating the same types of things. You're finding new new ways to make your food fun and interesting to keep you on the plan which is the whole point right it's the whole point which i love about this program it's like all right you know you have the chili but hey i added cauliflower rice or i tried it over a sweet potato or i i now i love kate when you shared what you do with the tamales tell everybody what you do with yeah. the oh yeah that was great the enchiladas. oh yeah that's my new favorite thing yeah, I make I like you call them tamales. My brain. I know, like, yeah, but that, that's kind of what I thought of. <laughs> they're enchiladas. <laughs> no, they're just, 
I, <laughs> that's what they are for me now. Um, so I'll like take most of the sauce off of them and I'll put them, I have one of those air fryers that has like the rack on it. I'll put them on the rack in the air fryer and cook them like five minutes and flip them like maybe three. And the texture completely changes. It's like they've become like more solidified and it's crunchy. And I'm like, these are tamales now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then I just take all the goo and I'll like put the goo in like some cauliflower rice. <laughs> and then that's it. The goo. <laughs> the goo. You know, the, the enchilada goo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for people who are listening who have an air fryer, it sounds like you would really recommend that they try this oh, yeah. recipe. I've heard the ravioli is good like that too. I haven't tried it yet though. So. Mm. And you did say that word crunch. Lynette, a little bit later, we're going to talk about that because that may be the comment so that we hear the most um, in phase one. Gee, I missed the crunch. So there's a solution for that uh, problem right there. And then Lynette, you'll be yes. talking a little bit later about some, some crunch options as well. Absolutely. Um, at, Lynette, can I pick up on something that you had mentioned to us when we spoke last week, which was... <laughs> You, you've clearly made yourself a priority, um, it's particularly during this time of COVID. And you had said, you know, I really, especially now, need the structure and accountability that you're getting in the program. Say a little bit more about that, like particularly on the accountability. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, for, for this to work for me, I, I do need to be accountable, not only to myself, but um, to Coach Rachel going in. <laughs> and um, weighing in and just staying focused, I think is what's so important. And knowing that you're going from week to week and just have that focus because within phase one, it, I mean, it, this program truly works and going in, weighing in and having those meetings. Um, but just, just knowing that no, no one's going to do it for you. You have to be accountable um, to yourself and going in and, and, and having that, um, that weigh in, it, it, it absolutely, absolutely helps and keeps you focused yes. and to re-energize, I think, you know, picking up your food and um, it, it just, it just keeps you going, keeps you accountable. Yep. And it's so hard to be accountable to yourself. Yeah, it's, it doesn't that, it turns into such a slippery slope. I mean, everyone does it. I do it. Everyone does it. Well, you know, I said I was going to do X, but. Right. Cause you said, yeah, yeah, you set goals. Yeah. So each week you, you set your goals and mm -hmm. um, yeah, you have your PA goals. You have your, um, what do you want to focus on for the week goal? And are you staying in the box? If you're not, you will discuss what happened. And what, what are your, I mean, talking about challenges for the upcoming week, I think is so important because sometimes you don't really think, oh gosh, that might be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, we have friends, we go out, I'm a very social person. We go out to a restaurant once a week and they all have burgers. On phase one, I have, it's worked for me. So I will get a side of the baby red potatoes and a side salad, bring my own little dressing and it works. So again, but yeah, knowing that I have to come back and say, yes, I was in the box. Yep. Yes. Yep. Also doing this during COVID, I mean, you've, we've all read the headlines, the trends, the health trends were abysmal. What we saw during COVID, people exercise less, comfort foods were flying off the shelves, mm -hmm. snacking went up, people gained weight, every single age demographic gained weight. And now- to, how's the irony of this, guys? We're coming out of COVID, and there are some signs that now people are like getting out and embracing socializing. It's just, so it was bad in COVID, and now it, it may even get worse when people are coming out and sort of overcompensate for getting yeah. sequestered in their homes. Making up for lost time, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, sounds pretty justified, doesn't it, Jen? I know. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy myself. I've been in my house for a year. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Kate, you also spoke to um, accountability making a difference for you in terms of helping you sort of follow through and tow, tow a straight line uh, with your weight loss. Very powerful how you talked about that. Speak a little bit about how the different aspects of added accountability in the program help you to stay on track during the week. Uh, one of the things is the fact that I know that if I 
put it in the app and I've sent the data, like, they are going to know already <laughs> before I even get to class. They're going to yep. know what I did. <laughs> and I'm one of, I've talked about it before in class, I'm a one more kind of person. So I'm like, okay, I'll have, I'll, I'll eat a burger today and that's fine. I'm just going to have one. And then I'll be like, okay, well for dinner, I'll have like one. And then, okay, well, I'll do like, uh, I'll just lunch tomorrow, lunch tomorrow. Yep. And then one. And then I'm like, I've been doing this for months. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's my problem is that I always one more myself, but anytime I start to, I'm like, do I want to put this in this app and really record this? Yeah. Do I want to not check the in the box box? Cause I want to check the in the box. box. <laughs> yeah, you do. And you get kind of competitive about that. You're like, okay, I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> this week, seven well, out of yeah. seven. <laughs> yeah, Jim and I are going to do a, a 5k <laughs> yeah well, we're competitive we're doing this <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> um anything else so again we've got people watching who are in phase one of course um and then also in phase two and sort of the opening context was if you're in phase two unless you're a robot you will have high calorie days. We all do. Everyone does. There, in, there isn't anyone who doesn't have high calorie days. So the more skills you can develop for and continue to practice for pulling off low calorie days to offset high calorie days, that's, that's the game we're playing with ongoing weight management. So is there anything you're hearing here that might be useful to bring into this next week, whether you're in phase one or phase two? Is there anything else that either of you guys would say about, again, I'll just come back to it one more time, Jen, the more is better, just because it really is so uh, counterintuitive. And it's also yeah. something that you can ease up on in phase two um, yeah. after you're out of that structure of the phase one box. So Lynette, anything else you'd say about more is better and how useful that's been for you? It, it's been extremely useful. Just knowing that um, I think even as I transition into phase two, I yes. will continually have HMR products. Um, even at the phase two meeting today, somebody was saying, um, I did have some high calorie days. So what, what, I, what that person was doing now is having a in the box HMR day, two days for that week and yes. lost weight. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of the approach I'm going to take as well is I, these products, um, I actually have, I really have enjoyed them. So um, whether it's entrees or shakes um, with my, um, you know, or making my pancakes or whatever it is, I think I will continually have the, the products on hand. And yeah, if, if you have a, a high calorie day, maybe take, take a day and stay in the HMR box. Yeah. So embracing that structure, right? That you learned in phase one, like embracing mm -hmm. what you learn because you know it works. Yeah. And always relying on that. I oftentimes tell my phase two groups, like, remember, you can always fall back on that if it's getting hard because that's what it is. We're, we're testing out the gap, yes. as we call it, right? Yes. And the gap is everywhere. So we need to make sure that like if decisions are getting hard, you just go back to what was easy in phase one. Right. And using those as a comfort almost. And like, you know, that those things work. So I love that, Lynette. Yeah. Kate, can you see yourself practicing this? I know, you know, phase two is a ways off for you. I realize that, but this whole philosophy of abundance around low calorie food, do you, can you see yourself playing, applying that skill as part of managing your weight long-term? What are your thoughts there? I, I definitely think so. One of the reasons I like more is better is I I am like such a big stress eater. <laughs> and if I want to, I can have as much like broccoli as I want. I can have, I, I can, if I need to, if I want, well, I don't need to, if I want to eat like a pound of sweet potato, I can just do that and it's fine. Probably not every day, not a good idea. Probably not great <laughs> for your <laughs> digestive system. <laughs> But water, like, water, water with all the fight. Yeah. <laughs> water, hydration. But yeah, I can, I can, I can if I need to, and it doesn't make me turn to like, I'm going to eat an entire bag of Doritos right now because I had a bad day. 
Yep. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. You know what drives me nuts, guys? It's it's those clickbaits when you're on the internet and you see, you know, cardiologist warns, do not eat this food. <laughs> you look, it's like it's like some fruit. It's like yeah. What on earth? It's, it's What's just, a banana do to you? Like yeah. honestly. <laughs> Where did this man get a medical license? I don't believe it. <laughs> Hey, let me show a couple of photos here. Um, I meant to put those up a little earlier. Um, Kate, can can I indulge you? Um, I, uh, I, all right. I, I threatened I threatened you that I was going to do. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> so, in my conversation with Kate, uh, what came up was uh, something very near and dear to my heart, and it is this: Kate is the uh, co-host of the online show Space Theater. And let me see if I, I get this right, Katie, are you ready? Where you and Lord Vogg travel the cosmos showcasing the best in cringeworthy movies and sci-fi horror. Did I get that right? That's <laughs> us. Awesome. <laughs> well, I love it. So our, our, our interview, our pre-interview went off the rails when, the minute she dropped this because I'm, that's one thing that I'm really into is horror movies <laughs> and sci-fi. So we oh, ended cool. up talking about that for the rest of the time. Um, so maybe I could just ask if I could indulge our audience. And Kate, I think you probably have had this experience too. You tell people I really like you know sci-fi and cringeworthy horror and like, most people are on, on that boat with you. <laughs> We're kind of in the minority there. <laughs> But I will like ask you. in our audience, is there a movie that you would recommend that uh, Kate and Lord Vogue review? Yes, and watch? please. Yeah, let's. So if for, for the for the three horror fans out there, Nancy, I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's a horror movie or a, a space sci-fi movie? Uh, do you, you prefer the B levels versus the A levels, Kate? I, we do a lot of public domain movies because they yeah. seem to be worse. <laughs> they seem to be worse, right? Yeah. Uh, so if anyone yeah, has a recommendation. That's why nobody buys the copyright again because it's not worth purchasing, <laughs> usually. <laughs> that's great. You, I, I might also ask Katie to resurrect a, a video that we had done a few years back, The Hospital Muffin, which oh. I'm going to tell you, but if, if the soundtrack to it, you'll like this, Kate. It's um, you know, it's it's about the muffins out to get you, and we use the background music for Creature from the Black Lagoon, which may I recommend oh. that as one yeah. of your next uh, movies to review. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Lynette. <laughs> Lynette. Yes. Here you were, and here you are, and my date is wrong. You're telling how much? Thirty what? Thirty one. 31. Congratulations. Just beautiful. That's <clears throat> really great. So when you see this photo, what comes to mind for you? Oh, happiness. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yes. That uh, I wish I would have, I wish I would have done this earlier. That's, that's what comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sure. I'm glad you didn't lead with, um, all the hard work it took for me to get there. It's really all about that, what, that, that attainable goal at the end, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't really consider it that hard, that hard of work. <clears throat> well, we've kind of been making that point here, right? The, the HMR program is a simpler approach than basically anything else you're going to try to do. You're going to lose weight quickly. Jen, we haven't talked about that enough and then right. you can do it without being hungry. If you, if you, uh, yeah. practice the strategies as recommended it's just extraordinary so yeah i'm glad uh, no wonder you didn't lead with it was hard because it was probably an easier way to lose the weight than what you've done in the past lynette absolutely cool um you guys there was another thing when we talked last week that you both hit on again independent uh independently touching on the same things and that was the value of your group and also the coaching i might add that in too <clears throat> So feel free to shout out to your group. Um, Kate, talk about your experience with your group and how they've supported you. you. You had a few nice things to say about how their ability to offer you ideas. Oh yeah, that's usually uh, about half of the class is just bouncing ideas off of each other. Yeah. Like one of us will be like, okay, I'm going to a wedding, help. And everyone's <laughs> like, okay, okay, we have this. Let's make a plan. And we all like formulate the plan. And one of us is like, you could make chickpeas. And one yeah. of us is like, 
go ahead and, and pack a cooler with shakes in it. And we all have all these ideas. And we're like, it's going to be fine. Eat some fruit when you get there. There'll be fruit somewhere. <laughs> yep. Planning, right? Yep. Planning. Eat before it you go. Come up with all those yes. ideas on your own. It's, it's Strategies. So helpful. The group is just so helpful. Yeah. Oh, real quick I, from Bob Garrison. Kate, this is for you. You ready? Okay. Godzilla versus the smog monster. <laughs> but, but then he wrote, it was so bad I couldn't finish it. Bob, that's where you and I part ways, my friend. I, I, I grew up on that stuff. Creature double feature on Saturdays. Um, Lynette, you also had some very positive things to say about your group and also your coach. So just take a minute and uh, <laughs> yeah. that was some love there. Okay. Yes, um, our group has, I, I think we've just gelled so well. And one of the things that I love about the group is we're always sh sharing recipes. So when somebody new comes in, of course, everybody introduces themselves and you share what, you know, what, what's the one thing that really worked for you. So just sharing those tips and tricks. And um, I talked about extracts and how I bought every extract there was possibly to buy and um, that was, you know, that was one of the suggestions from one of the group members, but Judy in our group shares recipes and how she, she's a fabulous cook. So she shares how she modifies anything and everything. And she shared the cracker recipe, um, which, you know, we all need something crunchy. So we, mm -hmm. we, she shared that with us. Um, we're constantly sharing recipes. And I think that's probably one of the best advantages of the one of the one of the advantages of the group certainly is big, a big one absolutely and coach yes and so whenever whenever I go out um I have coach Rachel with me on my shoulder because I know that I'm going to have to come back and she's going to say all right well let's look at your data were you in the box because of course that's one of the challenges that we've talked about maybe during the previous week is, did you stay in the box? <laughs> so coach Ra Rachel will, will come with me, but in a good way, because it keeps me accountable in a good way. <laughs> yes. And somebody just told me that when they were weighing in tonight, because I'm a, I have a substitute. Usually our group is tonight. Yeah. And they're like, I thought of you all weekend. I'm like, is that in a good way or a bad way? In a good way. way. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I hope it's good. And they're like, you know what we talked about? So strategies, right? It helped me stay on the box. I was all convinced going in, I was going to have a drink. And I'm like, well, coach Jen is going to tell you no. <laughs> Again, let's, let's talk about that. And it's like, what? like, and we strategized, right? And we talked about it. Um, and it, they were successful. So it's like, it can be done, but yeah but you have to be in that right mindset. You have to want to be coached by, and sometimes we'll use that. Well, you know, coach Jen says no, like friend Jen would say like, yeah, I'm in, but coach Jen will say, nope, I'm holding you accountable to this because this is why you're here, right? Yep. And coach Rachel will, will pull that too. <laughs> Rachel would say this, but coach Rachel will probably say something else. So here's, here's a sneaky move, Jen. How about you drop this one? Something like what, well, you know what? Uh, you know, as the coach, I actually think I'm going to that restaurant that night when you're going to be there. <laughs> right. Oh, what what time? Something else. <laughs> what time? Let me check my calendars. And I think I can make that work. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm imagining you like in the bushes with binoculars. <laughs> Once was asked to have a cutout of me at the grocery store. I'm like, that just sounds horrible. Like, why? What? Like, but we yep, should. To, to make sure that everybody made good choices. I'm like, yeah, we should get little, yeah, little coaches and just carry them around on our shoulder every once in a while. Maybe bitmojis. That'd be way funner. <laughs> so the accountability works, but it, it only works. And this is a testament to both of you guys and to everyone who's in the community watching is because you're choosing to be accountable. It, it doesn't work if you don't choose it. And, you know, whether you call it a, a necessary evil or, you know, we try to, my brother uses the term, we try to provide velvet glove accountability where it's sort of a nurturing, but still helping you toe the line. Uh, mm -hmm. It really only works 
if you're working in a partnership. So yeah, yeah so that's great. It's great that you guys <laughs> take advantage of, of that aspect of the program. Hey, let's talk about physical activity um, for a minute here. Um, so I need to share my screen again. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Kate, I'm gonna give you the floor again. And let me just, uh... who do we have here? <laughs> Whoops, Oops, sorry, there we go. Who's this? With me. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, wow, he's bigger than I expected. Those are <laughs> this is serious, serious black. Oh, are you shy? Okay. Harry he Potter reference there because... for those of you who are in the know. So serious, serious black. So uh, tell us uh, how he's been supporting you to start um, moving more. He's very supportive, yes. Um, we adopted him probably about a week after I started the program. Uh, so I have to take him on walks every day. And I'm like, well, look at him. I can't disappoint him. He wants right? to go for a walk. He had to go for one of the, like right when we started the feed. And I'm like, aw. <laughs> yep. He's your accountability for physical activity, right, Kate? He is. Look at him. I mean, I can't tell him no. <laughs> Who can resist puppy eyes? That's right. <laughs> Wonderful. That's so great. I love it. Um, <laughs> he's he's done. <laughs> he's like, I'm done. <laughs> Lynette, when you um, were talking about why it was time to join a, a really serious program, you you actually said something that we don't hear a lot. You know, people will say, oh my gosh, exercise, becoming more active. A lot of people consider that sort of like a nightmare before they um, start making the lifestyle changes and lose the weight. You actually said you enjoyed physical activity before, but had found yourself running into some compromises in doing that. Right. So let me just show our next photo here. Talk to us <laughs> a little bit about, about how things are different now with the weight you've lost and the exercise you're doing. <clears throat> So I, I started a um, fit body boot camp. Um, so, and I was doing, I mean, I love, um, I love that. I actually love to exercise, but I was doing that, but, um, and was having great success, um, except my joints were sore. Um, and so I thought now, now I just need to get some of the weight off. So I, I feel better and um, can actually just, um, enjoy life more, but anyway, um, so yeah, I love to golf. So I do fit body, like a 30 minute exercise every morning and then, um, or Monday through Friday, give my body a break over the weekends, but bike, um, I love to bike. I love to golf. And when I golf, I walk. Um, so it's yeah, lots of fun. So great. So great. That, that picture is a metaphor for a lot. Very nicely done. Um, I do want to come back to, we have mentioned the crunch and so many people have, have said, gee, you know, I really want ways to experience the crunch. I'm wondering if people in our audience have had that experience where, boy, it'd be nice to have things to crunch on. So we're going to talk about that. But first, I want to, this is a, a material we share in the program, which sort of details the many different preparation methods that you can use with the HMR shakes and their various forms, multigrain cereal and whatnot, the chicken soup even. Um, on the far left, the absolute highest volume, most filling, but at the same time, lowest calorie ways to prepare the shakes. So you, the ice cream or the mousse is sort of in a class by itself, as you know, Lynette, and then you get blended with ice and then with frozen fruit and then going to the right. So the items on the right, the more creative items, they, they can be made with less water, baked, and, and that's where you get some of the crunch. But talk for a minute, because you did share with me that you like ending your day with either a pudding, an ice cream, or a lava cake. What's your favorite ice cream? Talk a little bit just about that ice cream and how that is something you look forward to. Yeah, <clears throat> um, my favorite ice cream, I think that I've made, um, well, I've made a lemon one. Um, and you, all these recipes you can get on the HMR website. Mm -hmm. or, um, I actually have a, a recipe book too that I, I did get from our group. Um, so there's a lemon ice cream. There's a red velvet ice cream that I've made. Fabulous. The, um, the lava cake. I mean, I, I love sweets. And so I always save one of my shakes for the very end of the day. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'll make a lava cake with the HMR um, 70 plus the pudding, the chocolate pudding, and then add the fat-free chocolate pudding, one tablespoon of that, and then a little bit of water, and then mix it up and stick it in the microwave for 45 seconds, and it mm. kind of like lavas up, <laughs> and it's delicious. So I like to end my night either with something a little bit a little bit sweet, but stay, still staying in the box. Yes. Oh, no, well, that's the key, staying in the box and using whatever prep preparation methods work for you. Mm -hmm. I just put that continuum up just to <clears throat> emphasize you want to take advantage of how much food you can get for the low calories on the left side of that continuum. But you also have another strategy here, uh, more on the right side. Um, why don't you take us through that? what you've got there. So, yeah. So one of my favorite breakfasts, and um, we talked about this in our group, is to take the, uh, the, the pudding, the 70 plus pudding, and the pancake or the um, multi-grain cereal. Mm -hmm. And every morning, here are my pancakes. So I can make three pancakes and I'll eat two of them with this sugar-free syrup. And then I'll save one of the pancakes um, for a snack in that. So it's two, it's considered two shakes, but so I'll eat two of them and then I'll have another one. And I always have it with fruit, both, um, both. but that is my absolute favorite meal on the HMR program. Fabulous. You're blending the two, two products and, and creating variety and something that you enjoy, but in a healthier way. Yeah. I love it. Great. Love it. Um, we had a quick ice cream comment. I had watermelon ice cream the other day, watermelon, vanilla shake, ice, crystal light lemonade. Oh, that sounds tremendous. Yum. Uh, Perfect for summer. Yeah, really the watermelon. It's time. It's watermelon season, guys. It, it is. is. Even in North Dakota. <laughs> Even in North Dakota. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was just thinking about the watermelon in the fridge a minute ago. There you go. I was like, I'm going to put some chili up. lime seasoning on it and eat probably like half of it. It'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Lynette, you're getting a thumbs up from Jennifer, who has said she needs to start adding more variety to her breakfast again. So I think that's a really cool uh, recipe that you just shared. And again, play along this continuum and take advantage of the high volume recipes on the left. But for those times when you just need something a little different, you yep. just spoke so eloquently to it. Um, There's so many different recipes available and different preparation styles that, with, the, with the shakes. Awesome, really good. All right, so we're, we're nearing the end here, guys. It's been an awesome conversation. I, I do want to sort of in the spirit of final thoughts here, uh, all this work that you both are engaged in, um, it's only possible if on some level it's really worth it to you to put in the work. So we like to end on this note. Um, Kate, yep. what are you experiencing now and hope to experience more of with your weight loss and with the lifestyle changes that you're making that, that you're really present to as being most rewarding right now? So can you narrow it down to one or two things that just are making it worth continuing to forge ahead as you have done? The most... Uh the the most surprising thing for me i'm gonna try not to get emotional about it but like my mental health is is way better now mm. Mm. it is like insane how much better i feel now it's that's incredible awesome. <laughs> so great that's just so great you deserve that yeah. and i'm so glad that you're getting that from the commitment you've made here and i, I you know why we come back to these these aspects to people's experience is because where else do you get to talk about the benefits at length and the reasons why you have, and I'm really speaking to the audience too, why are you up to something different in your life? What are your reasons? You, you can't talk about or remind yourself about them enough. There's so many reasons out there competing with what we're all trying to do in the, in the effort to live a healthy lifestyle. We have to pause and ask questions like this. So Lynette, what about you? What are you present to that is that makes it all worth it? All the, all the work, all the effort, all the commitment. Just health-wise, I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, my energy level is way, way more. I don't get 
tired as easily. I can, uh, my daughter and I went on a one hour bike ride the other night. I mean, it's, and it, it's just, yeah, you just feel so much better to have some of the weight, you know, just, yeah, it, it's, it's really beneficial. Not holding you back, right, ladies? Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jen, what about you? Jen, you're, you're a really positive health role model. What, what comes to mind for you in terms of, you know, you have a lot of reasons I know, but, you know, one that rises to the top for you. Why do you practice oh. a healthy lifestyle? Oh, um, for my kids, mm -hmm. right? To be a healthy role model. Um, I was like, it like made my heart burst with pride when my dietitian or my daughter said, mom, I think I want to be a dietitian instead of a marine biologist. I'm like, well, that'd be nice because then you can stay in North Dakota. <laughs> she's seven like she's seven like and she just thinks it's the awesomest thing because I talked to her class about like and she's like mom you really need to tell them teach them stuff so I'm on the computer with this is so funny on the zoom with her class because she was online learning this year and I'm sharing okay this is how a portion it's it's great to do more is better with fruits and vegetables and these seven-year-olds keep sharing and telling me all their food and my husband after it was done he goes that was the most in-depth like guest reader thing that I've ever had I'm like <laughs> in a good way <laughs> so I think it's important I mean just to to support my patients to mm -hmm. know that like I use the products myself to make it easy. Like the shakes are my favorite because I'm not like a huge breakfast lover. So that's super easy for me to feel good and have the energy to continue. Um, physical activity has always been something that I like to do. Um, my daughter and I were kayaking this weekend at the lake. Um, I like to hunt and fish. I know that's kind of a fun fact that not everybody would expect from a, a small town girl in North Dakota, but I do like to hunt with my son. That's something and my, my husband and my family. So, Great. so that's something I need to be, um, physically healthy to go out in the woods. Cause sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a hike, maybe mm -hmm. not uphills like around the country. It's pretty flat here. <laughs> I mean, I love walking through a dirt field is not easy. <laughs> Oh, great. You bring your, your kids and your family into it. You know, yeah. you can talk about the reasons you have for yourself, but ultimately, and we've hit on this recently in some of our Facebook lives, you, you practicing a healthier lifestyle gives you an opportunity to maybe even be a better version of yourself, really there for people at your best. Um, and maybe that's a good note to end it on, Jen. Uh, yeah. So many good reasons to keep up the practice of a healthy lifestyle. And you uh, never know who's going to, you're going to touch. Like by just practicing, my mom busted out the whole wheat noodles the other day. And I'm like, did you even know those existed? She goes, should I have whole wheat? I'm like, who are you? <laughs> so it was awesome. I'm like, oh, I am rubbing off on folks. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, listen, Lynette and Kate, thanks for uh, letting us um, take a little, uh, for you taking us into your lives a little bit. Very generous of you. Really appreciate you joining us here and and spending some time. And as always, I want to thank those of you who are watching. Um, Lynette and Kate, you need to rewatch this just to see there are many, many comments from many <laughs> people. Go reply to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Um, really? And thanks thank for you. highlighting your success tonight. And we hope the conversation was valuable to our community and that there are some things that you could take into your week to help you stay on track, whatever your goals are. And please make sure to enjoy that sci-fi horror movie that you've made a plan to watch uh, this yeah. week. Uh, we'll want to hear about that. And uh, with that, I think we could wish everyone a good night. Thanks, everyone. So much appreciate your time. Have a Thank great you. night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>